Hi, I'm going to show you some of the molecules coronaviruses use to infect human cells. So I'm particularly interested in Wuhan coronavirus, which is the cause of uh, the ongoing epidemic in China and is spreading around the world right now. Uh, let's take a look at what a, a Wuhan coronavirus uh, looks like in electron microscopy. Okay. All right, so I have a image of two, these black arrows show two uh, of the Wuhan virus, two copies of the Wuhan virus. And uh, you'll see that it's a round particle. And on the outside, it has these spike molecules. There are these little fuzzy guys around the perimeter. On the inside, there's RNA, uh, which encode the instructions of the virus. And the virus's goal is to uh, get inside your human cells, cells in your lung, to dump its RNA into your cells so that your cells can produce more copies of the virus. This strategy is not uh, specific to coronaviruses. A lot of familiar viruses use these molecules that, are, that form spikes on the surface to invade human cells. Let's take a look at a, a couple other examples of that. This is uh, influenza virus example, and uh, in the center is an influenza virus particle, and you see again the spikes, the little fuzziness along the outside. The two other things are just empty membranes. Uh, they're there to let researchers see how does the virus actually um, fuse with these membranes. So how it, the idea is how does the virus fuse with the actual cell, but this is a simpler model of that. And we can see I can like I can kind of slice through at different depths and at different angles, and if I get the right position, I can see where it's the virus is contacting this nearby membrane. It's formed this little cusp. It's going to fuse with it and create a hole so that the viral uh, RNA the genome can be transferred into a cell. Let's look at one more virus that uses this same strategy of spike molecules on the surface. We'll look at HIV virus. So here are a half dozen HIV virus particles. Um, one thing you'll notice difference, we see the membrane around the virus. This It's spherical. Again, I'm cutting through it um, and I can sort of slice in and out through the virus. And one thing we'll notice is that there are many fewer spikes. That influenza virus and the coronavirus were covered with the spikes. HIV virus is a little bit different. It only has tens of, of spikes. For instance, here's, here's one, this little stub sticking out. Okay, so we're gonna look at these spike molecules. They're used by the virus to recognize your cells and to, to enter uh, your human cells in your lungs, uh, the coronaviruses. Uh, in your lungs. We're going to look specifically at the spikes on coronaviruses. Okay, so here I've uh, brought up some electron microscopy of, uh, of a human coronavirus. And it's looking kind of pale. Let me, let me try show, hiding this and showing it more time. Let me try to make the threshold. Okay, I just changed the threshold of this electron microscopy, the displayed threshold. So this is what one of these spikes looks like on a coronavirus. Okay, it's a human coronavirus. Uh, the, these human coronaviruses, there are four different strains that are known. They cause colds. It's a mild illness. Uh, they cause about 10% of uh, the common cold, cases of the common cold. The virus would be here at the bottom, and this is the spike sticking up. So this is the, the top here is the furthest uh, part away from the center of the virus. Um, and this is what the electron microscopy looks. This more detailed view than what we were looking at a second ago was obtained by averaging images from like 10,000 different spike molecules to get a higher level of detail. And from this electron microscopy, microscopy, we can figure out exactly what the molecular structure of the spike is. So let me show you that molecular structure.
Okay, so here's what the spike looks like. Um, and we have three proteins here. There's a green one, a blue one, and a red one. And they're actually all the same. They're three copies of the same one, and I colored them differently just so that we can clearly see the three. The spike is uh, symmetrical. Okay, all three copies are more or less identical the, in their shape. The orange part I'm going to talk about a little bit later are sugars covering the spike, sugar molecules. And the really interesting part of this structure is the molecule that the virus uses to get into the cell is actually here. And it's this little tiny thing. It's a sialic acid molecule. And it fits in this little cavity in the spike. The little blue dashed lines, let's see if I give you a better bet. There's some little blue dashed lines. Those are hydrogen bonds. Uh, those are attractive interactions between the sialic acid and the spike. Okay. When the virus encounters one of your cells, and your, your lung cells and other cells in your body are covered with these sialic acid molecules, it knows it's found your cell because the sialic acid molecule sticks here and triggers the initiation of this reaction, which is going to make the virus invade the cell. All right. So that's a human, um, human coronavirus that causes colds, uh, not the Wuhan strain. Um, let's take a little closer look first at this sialic acid. It's a very small, mole very small molecule. I just want to briefly show you that. Okay, it's this little speck here, only a few tens of atoms. It's a sugar, it's a monosaccharide. Um, and you might think, uh, and uh, I guess another important fact, influenza virus invades your cells by, and recognizes your cells by the same molecule, sialic acid molecule. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, you might think that other coronaviruses, well, they're in the same family as this human coronavirus, would also use sialic acid, but surprisingly, that's not the case. And so let me show you what the Wuhan coronavirus is recognizing, and also SARS, a virus that caused an epidemic in 2003, what it recognized. Oops. Okay, so let me try to get it. Where, where is it? Here it is. So... Wuhan virus and SARS virus are recognizing this protein, which is, again, it's a natural protein in your body, like this sialic acid on the surface of the cells. This is called angiotensin converting enzyme 2, ACE2. Um, there's, an an there's also an angiotensin converting enzyme without the 2, okay? This one with the 2 lowers your blood pressure. The one without the 2 uh, raises your blood pressure. Both of them work. They have this groove. Uh, let's see if we make this groove bigger. This groove here. Uh, whoop, 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 right in here. Um, both of them work by clipping a small angiotensin mo molecule. It's 10 amino acids long. The ACE without the two clips it from length 10 amino from 10 amino acids. Angiotensin from 10 to 8. And that raises your blood pressure, and this ACE2 clips it from 8 to 7, and that lowers your blood pressure. So this is actually a good molecule. Um, both ACE and ACE2 are interesting targets for a lot of diseases, for high blood pressure, for diabetes, for heart disease. Um, uh, at any rate, we're not going to be able to avoid Wuhan coronavirus by getting rid of this. This is an important good molecule on the surface of your cells. So how does the uh, how does the virus spike recognize this molecule? Let me bring up. Uh, I'd like to show you the Wuhan coronavirus, but we don't have a structure of it. So I'm going to show you SARS, which is the closest thing we have, the spike structure of SARS. Okay, and this is going to look like a lot like that human coronavirus. Still, the the three proteins. Um, the sugars aren't here, but uh, they aren't shown here, but in fact, there are sugars here. It was just in this particular model, they didn't add the sugars. Um, those sugars are part of all the spikes, the coronavirus spikes. And what they saw when they looked at SARS um, is that these uh, at the top of the spike, the virus would uh, flip out 
part of the, it would make a small motion. Let me show you what that motion looks like if I can. So let's see, here we go. Okay, do you see this, this little green part at the top? It's called the binding domain. And it can move from a down position where all three of them are down and kind of tucked in to an up position. And that up position is the only position that can recognize this ACE2 molecule, the angiotensin converting enzyme 2. When they saw this in electron microscopy, they only would see one up at a time. Like the red, blue, and green are identical, but only one would be up at a time. They didn't see two up, they didn't see three up. They just sometimes see one up, sometimes see it down. Okay. When it's up, uh, they also saw it bound to this ACE2. And it doesn't bind to just any old place on the structure. It's very specific on where it wants to stick to the ACE2. So let me show you exactly the correct location where it sticks. Um, Okay, so here's the act actually from the electron microscopy uh, that shows the ACE2 in brown. Here's the spike, it's flipped up. When it's attached to the ACE2, uh, what they see in the electron microscope is the thing is even more flexible. Uh, so let's see, there we go. Let me see if I give you a better angle that shows this motion. Okay, so, so the thing can uh, swing in and out. And what they observe next is that half of the spike just falls off when the ACE2 attaches. This is in SARS, okay? Uh, what the top half falls off. And here I changed the color scheme on you a little bit. The bottom half I colored light colors, light red and light blue and this light green kind of looks gray. Um, the, each of these three copies of the protein is cut at a certain point, and I marked it in red where it's cut. A protease, another molecule, makes a cut right here, and that's totally critical. If the cut's not made, then the virus can't infect. Okay, so each of the three ones has a cutting point, and what they observe is this green copy the top half with the ACE2 floats away. And then the red and the blue, they don't have ACE2, only one of them. These become unstable. They no longer stay attached and they float away. And we're left with just this bottom light colored portion of the spike. And this bottom portion in the middle exposes the mechanism which allows it to fuse with the human cell. Okay. Is this what's going on in Wuhan coronavirus? So everything I'm showing you is for SARS. Um, we don't have the structures for Wuhan coronavirus, but one thing we can do is we can look at the difference between this uh, SARS virus and Wuhan virus, because we know the chemical structure of the Wuhan virus from its genetic code. Um, so let me color the differences uh, between the two. Let's see, I have a little button I made to do that. There we go. So I colored every part of this green molecule, one third of the spike, orange, if it was different between the Wuhan and the SARS virus. So you see, it looks like a lot of orange. It's only uh, about 25%. It's about 75% identical, which is a high amount of identity. When two proteins in your body are 75% identical, generally they function nearly exactly the same. Okay? but it would be what we'd really want to look at here is sort of the really important part here where it's attaching to this ACE2 molecule. We see a lot of orange at the interface between the two. And that would make me suspect that this isn't quite right. Wuhan for Wuhan virus. SARS virus and Wuhan virus are probably a bit different here. And in fact, if I only had this evidence, I would probably think that Wuhan virus wasn't even using this ACE2. Okay, because there are so many differences right there. But experiments that were done in the last few weeks already confirmed that Wuhan virus indeed is using ACE2. Okay, but we can expect that our model based on SARS is going to be a little bit off because there are a lot of differences in the critical location where it binds. All right, I want to show you one last thing, and that is what can your immune system do to fend off this virus? So here's another structure 
again of SARS because we don't have the equivalent one for Wuhan. It's the spike. And instead of the red, blue, green coloring, I made it all white because I wanted you to focus on this colored part at the top. Okay, the orange is the differences, all the locations where there are differences between the Wuhan virus and SARS. And at the top, these colored blobs are antibodies. That these are things your immune system produces. These are fragment antibodies, like the light green and the olive. This is a, a light chain and heavy chain. Uh, the, an actual antibody in your body is about twice as big as this, but this is a fragment that they use in experiments because uh, it's simpler to work with. These three, so there are three antibodies, three pairs here. I've colored them differently, again, just to see, uh, to easily distinguish them, but they're the same antibody. It's an antibody called S230. It came from a patient who survived SARS. And you see that it bound, it binds at the tip of the spike, right near where the AC2 would bind. And uh, this is a neutralizing antibody. And by covering the spikes of the, the SARS virus with the antibody, the ACE2 isn't able to bind, and then the virus isn't able to recognize cells and infect them. Okay, so this is a mechanism your immune system uses to fight off the virus. If it can't get into your cells, then it can't reproduce. All right. One other thing that I told you I was gonna come back to was these sugars, and I've colored them pink in this structure, and they're all over the surface, and these sugars are a technique viruses often use to defend themselves against the immune system. Um, your cells in your body and proteins, molecules on the surface of your cells, like the ACE2, often have sugars coating them. And so your immune system does not generate an attack against sugars generally, because then it would end up attacking your own body. So the spike here has disguised itself with all these sugars, but the problem is, um, up where it needs to recognize the host cell, it can't put sugars there because they would be in the way, they would prevent the recognition with ACE2, and so that's a vulnerable part. And so that's where we see this antibody bound, okay? When I showed you earlier that the, top, the tips of the spikes, the three co copies were folded in, that may be a mechanism to disguise the virus from these antibodies and from the immune system. It keeps them folded in, hidden from view, uh, and only occasionally flips them out to see if there's an ACE2 molecule nearby. All right, um, let's see what, I think that covers everything I wanted to tell you. Um,